Hey everyone, Mike here, and we are returning to Return of the Night of the Zealot. A lot of returning going on. We have our brave adventurers, Leo Anderson and Daisy Walker, with specifically constructed decks for cooperation, just to show Colin it works in the game. And we are moving on to the second scenario, the Midnight Masks. Let's check out the story. In the wake of the disaster at your home, Lita Chandler, the red-haired woman from your parlor, lays out a tale that, even in light of what you've just witnessed, strains the limits of your belief. The creatures in your home, she claims, are called ghouls, cruel beings who plague the crypts, caverns, and tunnels beneath the city of Arkham. These creatures feed on the corpses of humans, and they are served by a dark cult within Arkham, whose members have inexplicably come to worship the ancient master of the ghouls. This cult has been killing innocent people and feeding them to the ghouls, satiating a monstrous hunger. A dark balance was maintained, until now. Recently, Lita continues, one of their lairs where the corpses were stored was destroyed. Since then, the ghouls have been more active than usual. I have tracked their movements and tried my best to stop them from running amok throughout the city, but I think there is something worse going on. The cult has been planning something darker and more ominous than anything I have yet observed. Indications are that this plan shall come to fruition tonight, shortly after midnight. Beyond that, I cannot fathom what to expect. Many of the cultists, Lita continues, will seem like everyday people, despite their foul intentions. Whenever the cult meets, its members don masks shaped like the skulls of various animals to protect their identities from one another. These masks are our mark, symbols of death and decay. We must unmask the cultists to expose and derail their plans. We have but a few hours. The more cultists we find before midnight, the better. Now I do think it's odd that she's saying we, because if you'll remember from last time, I chose not to let her burn my home, so she is not in either of my decks, and not really directly helping me. But I'm glad she thinks that we're a team. I don't really agree with her. But we will at least work to stop these cultists and uh, find some clues as to their activities. Coming over to our agenda and act card, we've got Predator or Prey. Lita seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. As you begin searching for them, you can't shake the feeling that you, too, are being hunted. So, we've got uh, six doom until something happens, and we've got a resign action. You don't want to risk taking too long, so you head to safety with the information you've gathered. So hey, this, this could be the shortest playthrough ever. I get to say, we resign, and there you go, five minutes. But, no, we'll try our best to actually accomplish something. And the act card, uncovering the conspiracy. You have one night to find the members of this cult and unveil their plan. The more members of the cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. So as an action, we can spend two clues per investigator as a group. And we draw the top card of the cultist deck. And that's made up of five cards. With Return to the Night of the Zealot, you have eight cultists total, and you randomly have five of them in the deck. Whereas in the original, you always had the exact same five cultists available. But yeah, so with two investigators, we'll need four clues to find each cultist. So if we want to kind of get a perfect result, which I think I've only actually accomplished once in the scenario after playing it many times... Then we'll need uh, at least 20 clues. Okay, objective, find as many unique cultist enemies as you can and add them to the victory display. If there are six unique cultists, you'll see where the sixth one comes from. Enemies in victory display, advance. Okay, let's look over at uh, the setup for the locations and then we'll get to our cards. So as you can see, we've got a fairly complicated map going on here. I use the patented toothpick method to show which locations are adjacent to which other locations. And yeah, this is a, a pretty complicated one for especially the second introductory scenario to a game. And both of our investigators are starting over here at our house, which we did not burn. So, so lovely to have it still in existence. We'll get to what we find at the house in just a moment. And uh, just to kind of tell you, we've got the house connects to Rivertown. That's the main hub connecting to most of the locations. The graveyard's all by itself. We've got this sort of like circuit from Miskatonic University to East Town, where you can only get to North Side and Downtown by going around the circuit. And then we've got this nice little triangle of easily accessible locations, uh, Miskatonic University, South Side, and St. Mary's Hospital. And we'll be progressing through all of them, hopefully, as we find these cultists and interrogate them. 
Let's see what cards Leo gets pre-mulligan and decide which ones we want to keep. So we've got, ooh, our new one, Stand Together. Choose another investigator at your location. Both you and that investigator draw two cards and gain two resources. Like that a lot. Guts, not too useful. It's just a willpower. Physical training, spend money to become stronger or have more willpower. Not bad, but I want a weapon. Okay, 45 automatic. Not quite as dependable as a machete because it will run out of ammo and it costs a whopping four. But uh, spend one ammo, you get plus one fight and plus one damage for this attack. So pretty good. And ooh, a beat cop. Great, because don't forget Leo plays allies cheaper. So these are both pretty good. Um, I like Stand Together. I want to try out the new card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of Physical Training and Guts and redraw two more cards for those. In this case, we get another Beat Cup and a Survival Knife. Uh, this one, if you remember from last time, it can be used for a really weak fight, but uh, more useful is if somebody attacks and damages me, I can exhaust it to get a really powerful plus two attack, plus one damage attack against them for free, kind of in retaliation. So uh, the two Beat Cops, <laughs> I don't even know if I'll discard them. Maybe I'll let one of them uh, die early and then just get a replacement for him. But uh, yeah, there we go. So Leo's starting with uh, two weapons, two allies, and our new little stand together that's going to give us a nice little cooperative boost right off the bat. And how about for our fabulous librarian, Daisy Walker? We've got the Chthonian Stone. So this seals a uh, one of the icon tokens from the bag so that I can kind of control my luck a little bit more. Fairly expensive though for that. Old Book of Lore, great. One of my uh, two favorite tomes, although I'd love to see one of the new encyclopedias I uh, use experience for. But this uh, gets uh, Daisy or Leo extra card draw. Forbidden Knowledge, that gives extra money. Oh, and Charles Ross, which lets other people share money. Well, we've kind of got some nice uh, combos going right off the bat. And Arcane Studies to be better at uh, investigating, which she doesn't really need, and better at uh, willpower. Hmm. So I kind of like the combo of Charles Ross letting me share money, Forbidden Knowledge helping me get money, and a really powerful tome right off the bat. So we're just going to get rid of Arcane Studies and the Chthonian Stone, and instead replace them with a Perception and a Medical Text, another tome to help uh, us heal. So Perception, at least, uh, she probably doesn't need the two intellect boost, but uh, she'll use that to get the card draw, at least. Not a bad little hand there. I'm happy that I have a Tome and an ally. So I kind of got some of the basic stuff I need for each character. So feeling really good about this draw overall. Okay, as we prepare to take our first turn, let's see what's going on with our location. We're at our house. Despite what happened, you just couldn't bring yourself to destroy your home. Darn right. Okay, so uh, we've actually got two clues here. Not bad. Enough to uh, move anywhere to start investigating right off the bat. And uh, two shroud. Very easy to overcome that. Uh, when the ghoul priest spawns, I'm sorry, buddy. You are dead, so you are not spawning. Uh, but as an action, draw one card and gain one resource. Limit once per turn. You still feel uneasy about going back. So we can get a ton of stuff from here. Although with all the card draw we have and all the resources we're going to get from stand together, I don't think we'll really need it. But we'll, uh, we'll see how things go. So we're certainly going to have Daisy go first, since uh, her Charles Ross guy will be able to then help Leo have a more productive turn. And I think probably both characters are just going to stay on the house and uh, kind of tank up with items right off the bat. So first we're going to play Charles Ross Esquire. That uh, uses up two of Daisy's resources. So just to show him in more detail again... Uh, you may spend resources to pay for item assets played by other investigators, so she can share her uh, resources for items, and exhaust him to reduce the cost of the next item asset played by an investigator at your location by one. He's also got some damage he can take, which, after I get kind of kitted up for the first few turns, I'll almost certainly use. So I'm going to exhaust him to make the old book of lore cost one less. So now it only costs me two instead of three, so thanks, Charles. And uh, Daisy's still got one resource there. And for her third action, she's going to play Forbidden Knowledge. So this gives her four secrets, uh, four tokens on here. And then uh, every turn I can exhaust it, take one horror. But since Daisy's got nine, she's not too worried about that. And uh, get one of the tokens as a resource whenever I do that. So I've used all three of Daisy's regular actions to play all three of these. But I'm going to go ahead and use the free ability of Forbidden Knowledge to 
get a resource for her as long uh, as well as a sanity. So that's uh, two resources she has in total to share with Leo right now. And since she's down to only two cards at the moment, and uh, you know she's going to be investigating next turn, she's going to go ahead and use the old book of lore on herself. So I choose investigator my location, search for the top three cards of her deck for a card, draw it, shuffle the remaining cards. So let's see what options we get. Another Chthonian Stone, Research Librarian, and an Anatomical Diagram. Play during any investigator's turn. If they have five or more remaining san sanity, choose a non-elite enemy at your location until the end of the turn. That enemy gets minus two fight, minus two of it. It's actually really pretty good. Chthonian Stone is nice. I do like Research Librarian because he would let me get one of the encyclopedias that I would like to desperately have. But, hmm, I'd have to, I don't know if I'll be able to get Charles uh, killed off that quickly. I don't want to waste his uh, free sanity and uh, and damage. And actually, I'll note that the Forbidden Knowledge doesn't say it has to be on me. So, hey, Charles, you got a little bit of uh, horror already. So, hmm, kind of between, I mean, I, you know, I want to try this cooperative thing. So, <laughs> should I do anatomical diagrams or the Chthonian Stone? I'm going to do anatomical diagrams, because Daisy's about to spend all her money, and I don't know if she'll have any for the Chthonian Stone anyway. Right, so that's Daisy's turn. She's got her ally. She's got her old book of lore, two resources, uh, one sanity damage on the ally, and some little helpful cards for later. Let's see what Leo's going to do. Okay, so first things first, after your turn begins, you can play an ally asset, reducing its cost by one. Let's get one of our beat cops out, giving Leo plus one fight, so he's already up to five fight. Fabulous. And I can discard him to deal damage to an enemy in my location when he's uh, low on energy, and I might want to play my second beat cop. So that's going to cost me only three resources, and it doesn't even cost me an action. So I want to get the survival knife out and the 45 automatic. 45 automatic out first, because that's uh, kind of the more important one. So for my actual first action, I'm going to go ahead and use stand together. Choose an investigator at your location. Both you and that investigator draw two cards and gain two resources. Oh, gosh, hopefully I don't get a weakness right off the bat. So, ooh, I've got a machete. I guess I don't need that gun as much anymore, do I? And, oh my gosh, my lucky cigarette case. When I succeeded a test really well, I can uh, exhaust it to draw a card. And they're all items, so Charles Ross is certainly going to get his uh, usefulness out. And then uh, Leo also gains two resources, bringing him to four total. So, cool. That's his first action. He's still got two more, because, again, playing the beat cop was free. And uh, just to show you, Daisy draws um, another Charles Ross. Well, if I get off the first one, I guess I can play this one. And then Logical Reasoning. Play if you have at least one clue. Choose to investigate your location to either heal two horror. That's great, since Leo doesn't have much uh, horror life. Or discard a terror card from his or her threat area. Okay, so some nice additions. At the very least, uh, two willpower is pretty good. So we'll see if we get some use out of them. And just to note also that Daisy has four resources now, and she's going to be able to use those with Charles Ross's ability, so we're going to play some items. So for Leo's second real action, he's going to play the machete. Uh, he'll use his own three for that one. And then, I guess lucky cigarette case. I don't necessarily need a survival knife until I actually know there's an enemy to retaliate against. And for that one, I'll use two of Daisy's, thanks to Charles Ross's ability. So Daisy has two resources left. Leo has one. He's got uh, a gun and a survival knife waiting to be played uh, maybe next turn. Well, not both, clearly, but uh, get the knife out with uh, Charles Ross's discount. And uh, that'll be it. We've got both player, both characters pretty well kitted up. And next turn, we'll start churning through clues and trying to find those cultists. We've got no enemies to worry about, clearly, so we'll go right to drawing our cards on our resources. Leo gets a guts, two willpower, and potentially a card draw. And Daisy gets, ooh, oh, I really wanted this, an encyclopedia. Exhausted, choose an investigator your location. They get plus two to a skill of your choice until the end of the phase. So whenever I don't want to be drawing with uh, the encyclopedia, I mean the book of lore, which I don't need to do much because I'm already kind of right where I want to be, I'm going to be encyclopedia it up. Man, this is, <laughs> I, I, I promise you all I did not like stack these uh, decks to have the perfect cards, but I'm feeling overjoyed with my uh, starting hands. And one resource for each character. Leo's going up to two. Daisy's up to three. Both uh, fairly wealthy. And we're going to go ahead and go into next round, starting with the Mythos phase. 
So first step is always to add one Doom to the agenda. So we're one out of six. And then Leo is going to get False Lead. If you have no clues, it gains Surge. So forget you, he's drawing something else. Oh gosh, on Wings of Darkness, test four <laughs> Agility. That's by far his worst. If you fail, take one damage and one horror. Then disengage from each non-Nightcon enemy engage with you and move to a central location. So on the negative side, he's pretty much automatically going to take one damage and one horror here. On the positive side, though, it's actually going to move me to Rivertown, which is the only central location. So I'll kind of save a move that I probably would have been taking next turn anyway. So as noted, Leo has only one agility, and he draws a minus two. So he is at zero versus four, because he can't go below zero. So Leo does take one damage and one sanity. But I think his friendly Beat Cop is going to take both of those and get him uh, close down. Because don't forget, we've got another Beat Cop in the wings if we need him. And note that Rivertown does have that central keyword we were looking for. The banks of the Miskatonic River are lined with docks, warehouses, and small shops in a district aptly named Rivertown. So Leo's going to move over there. Again, it's basically saving him one action. And in Rivertown, we're going to have two more clues here. Incredibly simple one shroud. Leo can even handle that. There is something unsettling about the water of the Miskatonic River tonight. It ripples and bubbles as though something is moving beneath the surface. Lovely. Maybe it's some ghouls. We'll find out. Oh, not a doom. Let's not do that. All right, so there we go. Leo's ready to investigate, but let's see what Daisy's going to encounter without her protector there to save her. Daisy gets... Oh! On the wings of darkness. Uh, well, geez. I didn't want them to both be in Rivertown. My house still has a lot of clues on it. That's unfortunate. Um, all right, so I'm going to uh, test for uh, agility for her as well. She's got two agility, better, but not better enough. And I will note that I do have some cards that could boost this, but I don't think it's really worth it because, again, it's not a terrible thing to move one right now. She gets a zero. Nice draw, but not nice enough. Let's see. Do I deal one damage and one sanity to or one heart to Charles Ross, which would get rid of him? But that will also mean it costs me one extra resource this turn when I play my encyclopedia or my survival knife. But we've got the resources to spare, and it's kind of nice that I'm getting the exact amount of damage that I need. So we're going to let him go. He did his job. Thank you, sir. And Daisy is still feeling nice, but she's up at Rivertown with Leo. So we'll start with Daisy again, and uh, she's going to go back to the house and get those clues. But first, she'll use her old book of lore, and she'll give Leo the card draw this time, since she's a little bit ahead of him in cards. We get a Guts. Don't really need another one of those. A Guard Dog, a great ally, but I only have one spot, and I already have another Beat Cop. Or a Heroic Rescue. Play when a non-elite enemy would attack another investigator at your location. Engage that enemy, resolve its attack against you, deal it one damage. I like that one more because I've already got two allies and no charisma to kind of hold everything else. I'm going to shuffle these back in and keep the heroic rescue. Daisy will also exhaust her forbidden knowledge to bring her up to four resources, but she does take her first horror damage, though she has nine to spare, so uh, she's not too worried about that. All those were free actions, getting to the actual meat of the turn. She's going to move to the house and investigate twice. Uh, it's got a shroud of two. She's got intelligence of five. Hopefully not too hard. First we get a minus one. That's one clue for Daisy. Then we get a star, which for Daisy is, if she succeeds, draw one card for each tome she controls. So since she has just the old book of lore, she's drawing... Ah, <laughs> come on. The Necronomicon. Okay, so put in play in my threat area with three horror on it. It cannot leave play while it has one or more horror. And uh, until I get rid of it, all my stars, like the one I just got, will instead be counted as uh, automatic failures. And as an action, including my tome action, I can move one horror from it to myself. So luckily I did not play the encyclopedia already, so I have a hand slot to hold this along with the old book of lore. But it is a bummer that I'm going to be potentially wasting my... Uh, Tome actions for quite a while to get rid of it before I get back to uh, using things like the encyclopedia. And just to show the card, here it is taunting me. You keep on coming out early in my game. Stop it. But on the positive side, Daisy easily gets the one clue to bring her to two. Let's see what Leo's going to do. So Leo has the money to play a survival knife, but I think he's going to investigate first and just make sure he gets the two clues here. He's got three intellect and uh, the location has one shroud, so he's two above. Let's see how he does. 
Okay, so first we get a cultist symbol, and that is minus two, so he still passes. Place one doom on the nearest cultist enemy. There is none, so we got pretty lucky there. He gets the clue and does not suffer any additional consequence. For his second investigate action, minus three. Oh, there's only like one of those in the bag, and I think one minus four, so that was unfortunate. But he's got one more action left. Let's try his luck. Minus two, gosh. He did not get to use his lucky cigarette case like I was hoping, but he did get both the clues using all his actions. So I'll note that we now have four clues, so as an action next turn, we can uh, find out where the first cultist is and maybe get around to interrogating him or her. Still no enemies on the board, so we get to draw a card and gain a resource. Another survival knife. I'm definitely doubling up more than I would like in uh, this scenario so far. And he's up to three resources, and he's got his two clues. And Daisy gets... Another encyclopedia. Well, at least it's got a wild icon. Actually, I guess... Yeah, she could have two of these out, but she'd have to actually spend an action for the second one, so that wouldn't help too much. And man, she's already up to five resources. She's got to spend some of that money as soon as she can. Okay, finishing round two, getting into round three. We gain our second doom. Leo draws... Oh, there's a new one. Mask of Amordhoth. I had a mask. Attach to the farthest cultist enemy. Oh, there isn't one. And place one doom on that enemy. If there are no cultist enemies in place, search the encounter deck and discard power for a cultist enemy, draw it, and attach Mask of Amordhoth to it. Shuffle the encounter deck. Attached enemy gets plus two health. Jeez. If attached enemy is not unique, it gains aloof. That means you have to actually use an action to engage it. It won't try to engage you. If attached enemy is unique, it gains retaliate. Jeez. Okay, so this is not too fun. Let's see who the first cultist that comes up is. Oh, right on the bottom. There's another new one. A lot of new cards in here. Okay, so uh, he spawns in the farthest empty location, Disciple of the Devourer. Uh, we'll see where that is in a second. And there's all Leo's uh, card to remind you. After you spawn Disciple of the Devourer, you must either place one Doom on it or place one of your clues on its location. If the current agenda is not Agenda 1, do both instead. So we are on Agenda 1, so that's good. Um, hmm. So I have to either put one of my clues on his location or put one Doom on him. Now Leo should be able to get to him pretty quickly, and even with his plus 2 health, he's not super strong in combat, not compared to me with my machete. So I should be able to defeat him and get the Doom taken away right off the bat. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, yeah, just let him take the Doom. And I will note the mask says that you only add a Doom to them uh, if they're already on the board. If you're drawing one, you don't get that extra Doom. So uh, this guy, he's going to have uh, three health instead of one and one Doom on him. Now, interestingly enough and kind of positive for us, we actually have a lot of choices of where to put him because Leo's still on Rivertown. Uh, there are no locations that are farther away than two moves. So we can choose from St. Mary's Hospital, Northside, or Downtown. St. Mary's Hospital is the most uh, easily accessible from many locations, so it should give both of them some flexibility. So we're going to put this disciple with his mask uh, right over here on the hospital and hopefully deal with him pretty quickly. And he does have one Doom on him, added with the two Doom on the agenda. We're halfway there. And for Daisy's card draw... A locked door. Attach to the location with the most clues and without a locked door attached. Oh, this is so lucky. Uh, the attached location cannot be investigated. Well, so far we only have two investigated lo uh, two locations we can attach anything to, and neither of them has clues. So let's just go ahead and say our house is locked, and it's pretty much going to be a meaningless card. And that was great. Didn't love that cultist, but the house uh, should not affect us too much. So I do want to deal with this cultist fairly quickly this turn, but I also want to know where exactly the uh, the new cultists are going to show up. So I think I'm going to activate Daisy first and have her use an action so that if the cultist is dangerous, Leo can be the one who kind of jumps on him. So for Daisy's first action, we're going to spend two clues from Leo, two clues from Daisy, uh, four total, and we're going to see who our first cultist is and where they are. And this is a new one. Jeremiah Pierce, your next door neighbor. Oh, that's a little horrifying. So he's got uh, pretty good combat stats. Four fighting, three health, four evasion. Uh, he spawns at your house, so oh, he's right on Daisy. This is not great. Okay, uh, so, but we can parlay with him. Add Jeremiah to the victory display automatically? Wow. 
We just take an action and he goes away. But then test willpower four. Place one doom on the current agenda for each point you fail by. Jeez. He seems a little too interested in what you've been up to these days. Okay, so unfortunately it's Daisy's turn, so he's going to engage her immediately. And uh, she cannot fight him. She cannot evade him. So I think I'm going to have to take the parlay. But uh, we'll see if I have some cards that might help me pass the test. Because her willpower is three, not too shabby. But I want to get it up to at least, uh, you know, six or even seven to make this... Uh, I mean, if I fail by one, it's not a huge deal. But if I fail by a bunch, not so great. Now, before Daisy does anything, let's go ahead and use our old Book of Lore's ability on her. Give us some more cards that might help her with this test. We got Pathfinder, an amazing ability. Gives her more movement. Another old Book of Lore. And drawing the sign, but luckily, since we're not actually drawing it yet, we're just using the old Book of Lore, we'll be able to shuffle that back in. So, old Book of Lore does have a uh, willpower, but Pathfinder's a powerhouse card. I'm definitely going to keep that for uh, future play. And, yeah, I'll shuffle the rest of these back in. So for Daisy's second action, she's going to parlay with Jeremiah Pierce, the friendly neighbor. Um, I mean, it looks like he's just automatically going to say, hey, I'm sorry for being a cultist, but he might uh, use up our time for a little while if we don't have enough willpower. So he goes a victory display automatically. Plus one victory point. Love that. But uh, we've got three willpower versus his four, and we really don't want to fail it by much if we can help it. So I'll definitely use uh, Logical Reasoning. That's plus two, so she goes from three to five. I'll use one of my encyclopedias, which has a wild. She goes from uh, five to six. That is beating Jeremiah Pierce's test by two, which at normal difficulty is fairly consistently going to be okay. I don't want to use anything more than that. And gosh, with the Necronomicon, her star result becomes an automatic failure, which would be horrific. So this could be... The end right here, if I draw really badly, she's up by two, six versus four, and it is a skull. What is a skull? Minus X. The highest number of doom on a cultist enemy in play. That is only minus one. We have gotten Jeremiah Pierce for a free action, well, using some skill cards. No negative consequences. Thank you, next door neighbor. You were a good guy. Okay, and for her third action, this one's pretty simple. We're going to play Pathfinder. Which says, during your turn, if you're not engaged with any enemies, exhaust it to move to a connecting location. It uses up a three of her resources. And then we're going to immediately move it, since that was her final action. And uh, we'll get over to Rivertown to join Leo. Now, we cannot do the Necronomicon this turn, because we already used the old Book of Lore. Should we get money from Forbidden Knowledge? Sure we will. So, uh, although, guess between the Necronomicon and that, we will be running out of uh, sanity pretty quickly. But... Hey, uh, sometimes bad things have to happen. So here she goes, do to do pathfinding her way on over, although Leo's probably about to abandon her because I think he needs to go fight that cultist. So the thing is, don't forget the mask makes the cultist aloof, so Leo would need to use an entire action to even engage him to uh, be able to fight him with his machete. So unfortunately, that means he cannot fight him this turn because it'll be one, two to get over there, and then one to actually engage him. So probably... I mean, let's move one and see. We'll go to Southside first, since that doesn't really lead anywhere else. Middle-class houses with gamble roofs crowd together between the streets of Southside. The neighborhood is known for its cultural and social landmarks, such as South Church, Ma's Boarding House, and the Historical Society. Okay, we got two clues again. Pretty easy shroud. And as an action, search your deck for an ally acid and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck once per game. Uh, Ma's famous for its cheap rooms and mystery meat Mondays. Gosh. A motley variety of characters can be found coming and going at all times of day. So Leo's definitely not going to get an ally with this, but I do think Daisy will probably get... Uh, I forget his name, but the guy that gives a bonus to investigating and uh, resources whenever you investigate correctly. So uh, that's going to be a good one for her. So he'll kind of save that ability for her. And now he could investigate, but he's only one above this, so I think he's going to head on over to the hospital and uh, get ready to fight that, that uh, cultist there. Arkham's only hospital, St. Mary's has a 24-hour receiving room and is busy at all hours of the night. Dr. Mortimer and Knight Sharon have, Nurse Sharon have been particularly stressed lately, thanks in part to recent events. Okay, another fairly simple shroud, only two, two clues on it, and once per game we can heal three damage, which neither of us needs yet. An extended stay at St. Mary's can do wonders for the body, but its effect on one's psyche is unclear. That's not great sounding. And for Leo's third action, um... No need to engage the guy and let him deal a damage to me because I don't have my survival knife out yet, but let's fix that with two resources 
and play one of our survival knives. So in the future, we can let somebody weak like that attack us and get a free attack against them as well. Okay, so our little cultist friend just sits there. He's not doing anything yet. He's not gaining any more doom. Uh, Daisy and Leo are a little bit split up. We'll try to get her to join him soon and pick up these clues he left behind. Let's uh, gain some cards and resources. Leo is pretty much fully equipped over here, and he draws an overpower, plus two attack, and draw a card afterward. Not a bad card to have. And he gets a second resource. Daisy has lots of fun little toys and three resources. She gains another Chthonian stone. Hey, she has the money to pay for it, so why not? And a fourth resource. Okay, new round, new mythos phase. We get a third doom, plus one from our cultists on the board, but still not enough to uh, trigger the six. And Leo's getting Crypt Chill. Uh, test four willpower. If you fail, choose and discard one asset you control. Well, that's not ideal. Uh, so Leo's got four willpower, pretty good already. He's going to go and use his guts to bring it up to six. Let's see if that's enough for him to survive this. And he gets a uh, minus three cash. All right. That was a bummer. So sort of the obvious choice to lose, sadly, is a survival knife. I've got another one in my hand, and it's one of the cheapest things I have. But still, that was an unfortunate card. For Daisy... Okay, false lead, and she... Oh, wait, she does have no clues. Never mind, so this again gains Surge. We've not actually had to deal with one of those uh, taking our clues away yet. Uh-oh. Another Disciple of the Devourer. Okay, so you guys are the farthest empty location, which is going to be... Looks like probably north side, but we'll look in a second. And then uh, we have to either place one Doom on him or place one of our clues on its location. We don't have any clues right now, so I guess he's getting a Doom. So farthest away from us for this point would still be either north side or downtown. North side's closer to Leo, so there he is going. Leo will <laughs> try to get one of the guys and rush up and get the other one while Daisy's hopefully hoovering up those clues. Speaking of Leo, let's fight our little friend here. He's got three combat and three uh, life from the mask. And Leo is going to spend one action to engage him, and let's see what Leo's fight is looking like. So Leo's got four strength, plus one from the beat cap, plus one from the machete, plus one damage. So he's six versus three, three above. And he's going to need uh, two successful attacks, both of his remaining actions, to actually defeat the Devourer entirely. First one gives us a Skull. That's uh, the highest doom on a cultist, which is still only one. And that does also mean that Leo succeeded by at least two. So he's getting a free card draw. Gosh! Discard all but one card from your hand. Uh, all right. I like the survival knife. I'm going to keep that. But that was not ideal. Come on, weaknesses. Why? All my free card draws are hurting me. This is <laughs> a little frustrating. All right, but that does do two damage to the Devourer. Let's see if we can get the last little bit of damage. Another one. So he is done and loses his Doom and his Mask as well. Okay, so as discussed previously, Daisy is going to use her Pathfinder to move to Southside for free. She is going to use an action to get a free ally. It'll be our good friend, Dr. Milan Christopher. She gains plus one intelligence, which she doesn't really need, but hey, whatever. And every time she investigates, she gains one resource. So that leaves her with two actions left. She will go ahead and play Dr. Milan with the four resources she has. And finally, she will investigate uh, with six intelligence instead of five versus two. And, ooh, that is minus three. And if I had failed, I would have placed a clue on my location. But since she was so high above, she succeeds anyway. So she's got one clue. She'll get a bunch more next turn. Dr. Merlan also gives her a free resource, her only one. Coming over to her numerous assets, uh, she will use up the Forbidden Knowledge. And she put the uh, horror damage on Dr. Milan. He can take one without any issue. And then we will also get rid of one of the Sanity on the Necronomicon, bringing Daisy up to three. And that one we can't choose to put on anybody else. Okay, so to end the turn, our cultist isn't doing anything. Leo gets another Heroic Rescue to replace the one he lost, and a third resource. And Daisy gets a shortcut. Cool. Uh, so you can have somebody move for free, either herself or another investigator her location. And also gets a third resource. Into our next Mythos phase. We are getting our fourth Doom, and there's one on a Cultist out there. So unfortunately, unless Leo can defeat him this turn, we are going to advance next turn. Leo is gaining another locked door. And this does actually go on St. Mary's Hospital, which has two clues. 
And we can't investigate there until somebody either breaks it down, which uh, Leo would have a pretty decent chance to do, or uh, picks the lock, which neither of us can really do at all. Daisy, on the other hand, draws a Crypt Chill. Test four willpower. She's only got three to start out. If you fail, choosing to discard one asset you control. So Daisy only has a couple cards that can grant her willpower, and I don't really mind losing the old book of lore, since I'd kind of rather have the encyclopedia anyway. So I'm just going to let her draw as is, with her being minus one, three versus four. And she does get minus one again, so it's down to uh, two versus four, so she fails. So sadly, that does mean that I have to say goodbye to my old book of lore, but uh, we should be replacing it with an encyclopedia fairly soon. So figuring out who wants to go first, it's pretty important for Leo to get up to destroy that cultist, or we're going to lose basically an entire turn of the game. So let's have him go and go one, and see what's at Miskatonic University. Miskatonic University is one of the most prestigious colleges in the Northeast. The university library is famous for its collection of occult books maintained by the esteemed Dr. Henry Armitage. Whoa! Four Shroud. Good thing that Daisy is so good at investigating. And, uh, ooh, but four clues there all by itself. And as an action, search the top six cards of your deck for a tome or spell card and add it to your hand and then shuffle your deck. And one victory point for exploring it completely. The campus in, is quiet and lonely. Several of the buildings have been left unlocked for students and faculty working late into the night. So that'll be a good place for Daisy to go to instead of the currently locked hospital. While Leo's going to go over here. And in this case, he is immediately engaged with the Disciple, because uh, this one is not aloof, does not have a mask. And uh, yeah, so Leo's going to have one action left. This guy's only got three combat. Leo, remember, has six, so he's ahead by three. Only has to hit him once to defeat him. Uh, so that's another minus two, and place one doom on the nearest cultist. Well, hey, lucky for us, the nearest cultist is now the deadest cultist. So uh, no doom for them. And we should have a whole nother turn before we have to advance to the next uh, phase of the agenda. I will note, though, that sadly, uh, Leo got a minus two and uh, needed minus one or lower to be able to use his lucky cigarette case. So no free card draw for him. And as for Daisy, she's going to use her first action to try to get the uh, second clue at south side. Minus two, six minus uh, two, so that easily succeeds. She's got two clues. She's going to use her Pathfinder ability to move straight to the University. And that leaves her with two actions to try to get uh, two of these clues. Now for the first one of these, she is going to go ahead and use Perception and boost herself to 8 instead of 6. Oh, which is more than enough. But it also lets her draw a card if she succeeds at the check. It is another Chthonian Stone, so might want to play one of those, especially to get rid of that... Uh, Really nasty stone one that uh, is minus three. She gets a third clue, one away from being able to find another cultist. And for her final action, she'll try one more time, this time without a bonus card. Hey, I knew there was a plus one in that bag somewhere. So that's great, we're set up to find our second cultist uh, as one of our actions next turn. I'll note, by the way, that that turn is even better than you thought it was, because with Dr. Milan's ability and three uh, successful investigations, I go up to... Six resources. Fantastic. And uh, I'm going to use the Necronomicon. Almost uh, ready to free up one of my hand slots to get the uh, Encyclopedia and maybe one of my two Chthonian stones as well with all my money. And, uh, yeah. So Daisy has four horror. Not great, but the Necronomicon's going to be gone next turn. Let's end her turn by drawing a card. Forbidden Knowledge. Don't really need the money, so I'll probably just use that for the Intellect Boost. And she gets a seventh resource. And our friend Leo gets... Let me handle this. Ooh. Play after another investigator draws a non-parallel encounter card, but before resolving it, you are considered to have drawn that encounter card. You have plus two to each of your skills while resolving that card's revelation effect. That'll be great if uh, she draws a monster, for example, and I can just take him straight away. Additionally, Leo is up to four money, so fairly rich himself. Let's see if we can get that survival knife out now that there's not any cultists. Although, hey, there might be one in just a moment.